Escape from Tarkov is in a make or break moment right now. The biggest issue with the game, in my opinion, is how it feels when you play it for a long period of time. It has been plagued with networking issues that are handicapping it from becoming what it truly could be. I mean, check out this clip from earlier this wipe. You should not be able to be shot before you can see the person. However, according to Nikita, the lead dev, they have rewritten the entire network infrastructure with this last patch. Has it actually solved the desync issues and peers advantage that have frustrated us to no end? Let's find out. Hello everyone, this is CZTL and today we're going to find out if Battlestate Games has finally solved its netcode issues. Before we get into the results, let's go over how I conducted the testing, because it's important to know how much error could be in the results. It's the same way that I had performed the testing in my previous netcode videos. I have two computers set up right next to each other. Before I launch the game, I start recording the footage at 60 frames per second. I synchronize the clocks on both computers, which should get within one millisecond of accuracy with only one network hop. I then overlay the time being printed as fast as possible on both machines. I take a couple pictures with my camera, and then I synchronize the frames after the fact in my video editor from both clips. While it's not perfect, this should give us around 16 milliseconds or less of accuracy. This is far better than synchronizing on sounds like grenades, as those don't actually line up correctly. I performed my testing across a couple days, on multiple different maps, and where I always got more than 60 frames per second. These tests were performed on offline co-op raid servers with standard settings, including scavs and bosses. I tested to get two sets of results, low ping and high ping. The first location being NA Northeast, where I got an average ping of 30, and the second being the Middle East, with an average ping of 155 milliseconds. And just in case you were wondering, both computers are hardwired in with gigabit ethernet. So now, the real question. Did the network performance improve? Unfortunately, the answer is nuanced. I wish I could give you a yes no answer because honestly, that would be a much easier video to make. But I'm doing this for all of you. It depends what we measure and how we interpret the results. So. Let's start out with 30 ping and see the thing that you probably care the most about. What is the latency for eating a can of peas? This was actually difficult to measure. So let's try to go from when the spoon goes into the peas. Unfortunately, I don't have results prior to this patch to compare to, but it's 150 milliseconds. As you can probably tell, I tested a lot of different things and I have some interesting findings at the end that I'll share. But for now, let's get into the actual good stuff. I'll show you how I would break down an average clip and then give you the summary of the results. And then we'll compare that to the results prior to this patch. I would set up the clips side by side like this and I'd record three different things. I'd measure movement, hit registration, and shot registration. Movement was measured by the difference in time it took to see the full head from the peeker to the stationary player. Hit registration was measured from the time it took between when I clicked the mouse and when the other player got hit. And shot registration is from the click of the mouse until the other player could start to hear the sound, as you hear the shot of the sound before seeing the muzzle flash. In this clip, it took the second player 181 milliseconds to see the peaking player, 198 seconds to get hit by them, and 343 milliseconds to hear the shot. As you can see, we have a ping of 20 to 25 milliseconds. So this clip isn't great, but let's take a look at the other test that I did. Here's a clip where my ping was an average of roughly 155 milliseconds. As you can see here, it took the stationary player 431 milliseconds to see the peaking player, 465 milliseconds to get hit, and an overwhelming 638 milliseconds to hear the shot. While the ping was bad, those results are terrible. Now, let's take a look at the summaries to see why the results are nuanced. With a ping of 30, the delay in movement was a minimum of 175 milliseconds, an average of 222 milliseconds, and a maximum of 300 milliseconds. The registration was a minimum of 150 milliseconds, an average of 217 milliseconds, and a maximum of 283 milliseconds. Hearing the other player's shot, however, was a minimum of 280 milliseconds, an average of 365 milliseconds, and a maximum of 400 
50 milliseconds. Again, this is over 20 samples and that is not great. Now let's look at the results from the 155 ping player. Movement took a minimum of 348 milliseconds, an average of 414 milliseconds, and a maximum of 466 milliseconds. Hit registration took a minimum of 364 milliseconds, an average of 441 milliseconds, and a maximum of 478 milliseconds. While hearing the other person shoot took a minimum of 582 milliseconds, an average of 635 milliseconds, and a maximum of 683 milliseconds. That is incredibly bad. So with numbers like these, why would I ever say that these results are nuanced? To explain, I'll have to show you the results from my previous netcode test. These are the results from the end of 2022. As you can see here, the only thing that is better here is movement. It went down by over 20 milliseconds. Hit reg, however, more than doubled. With bad ping, everything almost doubled. Minus movement, which went up slightly. Now, you may be asking yourself, in what world would that be better? Having slightly better movement at lower ping with everything else being terrible? Well, remember back to the beginning of the video? There was a clip of Pika's advantage. Being shot before you could see the person used to be one of the worst things. It was hard to tell hackers from legit people. It also used to be the case that you were almost rewarded for having a high ping. I did a whole video on that in case you want to check it out. While increasing the hit reg and the amount of time it takes to hear shots isn't great, neither is having a very large discrepancy between movement and hit reg. Hit reg used to take half as long as movement. So prior to this update, you used to not be able to trust your eyes. And ears for that matter with oculus and everything. Switching hit reg to be roughly as quick as movement greatly reduces peekers advantage. The other thing that they seem to do is really penalize people who play on high ping so that they can abuse peekers advantage. And yes, I am guilty of playing on EU servers, but only to do quests, I swear. So yes, the results are mixed, but the game might feel a bit better and a little bit more fair. I do think that I found two other improvements that they made during this patch during my testing. I found that bullet holes in the wall seem to be more accurate across clients. I remember doing testing for my horizontal recoil does nothing video and it seemed like bullets would land randomly. Also, scavs did seem to die at the exact same time to all players with the same ping. So I believe that they could be server side now. That could improve performance for many people. I did however find one issue during my testing. Items still do not appear consistent across both clients when dropped, but I think that's been there for a while. All in all, I'm a bit underwhelmed with this network architecture rework. I expected big improvements to everything, and frankly, this is not that. So this make or break patch, in my opinion, is a bust, and I hope for the longevity of the game that they're not done with this network architecture rework. Now smash the like out of that shit button, thank you for watching, and CZTL out.